Hey, you know, one of the things I hear all the time from women who are trying to be more visible, trying to grow their business is that they're, tr they're in all the places. They're doing all the things. They're scared to be visible because they feel like people are going to judge them. And frankly, the other thing that happens is they keep themselves invisible because they know that once they start to get visible, people are going to want to work with them. And then they're going to have to talk about their pricing. So obviously there's so much that scares us about being visible. And that is why I have brought on Anna Sabina. No, she is a result driven and efficiency focused branding coach and business coach. And so she teaches her clients how to be visible. She has some very specific strategies and I'm so excited to have her here today because she's in one of my favorite places, Hawaii, first of all. So we're talking to her Syracuse to Hawaii, who's got the better place to live is hands down. Anna does. So Anna, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And what a great topic. I'm very excited. Yeah, well, I know that you're an expert on it. So let's just jump in. Can you get started by talking to my audience about who you help and what you do exactly? Sure. So my name is Anna Sabino and I help founders, people who want to increase their influence and their impact by being a guest on podcasts and by creating a visibility strategy for themselves that is sustainable. I love it. You're so <laughs> speaking my language. So all this month and next month, I'm talking about visibility um, because I've really watched my clients kind of get clarity, but then they kind of fall back into this lull of like, okay, I know what I'm doing. And then they kind of fart around in their businesses. And I was like, we have to get you guys seen by other people. Now that you're clear with what you offer, you clear, you're clear with who you help. Now people have to know about it. So I love this idea of it being sustainable. Absolutely. And you know, Jen, it's, I also think that clarity comes with exposure. So I agree that you have to do a bit of work beforehand, but then just run with all these ideas and clarity will come by getting visible, by getting mm. on podcasts, by getting on social media. Literally the answers will come. <laughs> I love that. Can you talk to us about your experience that what have you seen with women entrepreneurs and their fear of visibility? What's your experience with this? Yeah. So unfortunately, what I've really noticed and what made me sad is so many women are afraid to get visible and afraid to put themselves out there because of the look. I asked my audience this question is like, what stops you from getting on video? What stops you from putting yourself out there? So there were a lot of responses of, I am not confident I'm going to sound right. But there was an overwhelming amount of responses of, I just don't think I look good. Mm. So yeah. it's like old stories about self-esteem, body image, what I look like, how I compare myself to other people, et cetera. Right. And that can be powerful and very crippling, I would have to say. Like that, yes. that is what stands in the way of our growth. I've actually struggled with that myself. And I had another guest on a couple of weeks ago, a food and body love coach. And we talked about this in depth. Um, and then interestingly, on, on the other side of it, like I always struggle with my weight and looking like I'm too big and too, like I don't fit the norm of what a quote unquote, you know, should I should look like. And then recently I had a conversation with a woman who, um, because she got ill, she lo lost like 40 pounds. And she says, I'm, I'm stuck at a size two and she can't like gain weight. And her whole story is she doesn't want to be visible because people call her anorexic and are you sick? And they kind of like talk down to her because she's too thin. And it just hit me like, we don't know what everybody's stories are. And no matter what we do, there is no one right way to show up and be visible, that's gonna please everybody, right? Yeah, absolutely. I believe that we all have to work on these voices and mm -hmm. I'm actually, you know, do filming a lot of videos and publishing videos about normalizing these voices that everybody hears them. We all have them, but it's about this empowerment to quieten them because if we don't do that, it's just going to stop our growth. And trust me, we all have these voices. Yeah. They show up in different forms at a different times, but it's like a constant struggle, right? Yes. What are some of the, what are some of those, what are some of the ones that you hear the most from your clients, those inner voices or those limiting beliefs that the, the inner conversations basically that we have, what do you hear the most from your clients? 
So very often my clients just are, I mean, they have too many passions, I would have to say, too many interests, and they don't know which one to choose. Okay. And in their minds, it's basically they are choosing, they're working on it, they are getting clarity, but it's actually procrastination. And I believe that these are actually these voices that keep showing up and getting clarity can be pretty much an excuse. You know, my answer to this, just pick one mm. because it's impossible to pick like a perfect thing right away. I can guarantee you're going, you're going to be um, changing. Your stories will be changing. Your brand will be changing. Your business will be changing. So it's time to start. Just pick something and just get it out of the world. Okay. So let me, can I just unpack this for a minute? The... The story is, I'm not clear enough. Right. I have a million things going on. I don't know which one to do. So instead of just picking one, I'm going to use a story like, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not, I don't look good enough on camera. I'm not thin enough. I'm not fashionable enough. Like they're going to use those stories to stay hidden rather than just choose a lane and pick it and get, get going. Is that, is that what happens? Right. And because there's no deadline, technically, we have to <laughs> self-impose that deadline. Yes. And we just keep postponing and, you know, keep waiting, keep waiting for that website, keep waiting for something to be done before we can start. And then time just passes. Opportunities just pass and us then, by. And then seven years ready. goes by. Right. And I think we like tend to spend that energy on this agony of choices, of making choices, of getting clear, mm -hmm. instead of just like pushing something forward, you know? And doing it imperfectly. Right, right. So talk, can you talk a little bit about the imperfect nature of being visible? Like how does that show up for your clients and what do you, what do, you do to help them with that? That's a great question because I've seen such great results of those who started booking themselves on podcasts or putting themselves out there before we even start the program. You know, they, they just get free things and they just patch things together and just, they start putting themselves out, the, out there. So by the time, for example, we start the coaching program, they are already on their interview number five or seven mm -hmm. and every single exposure teaches them of what they want, what they don't want, what they want more of. I just think it's the best way to get clear. It's just so to put so out there. I love the strategy of being on other people's podcasts. And here you are on my podcast, right? Like being right. to your audience, right? So you're you're walking the walk. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you help your clients actually use this as a venue for more visibility and exposure? Sure. So it is a relatively new way to grow your business. So a lot of people are skeptical and that's the time to get into it. What I say, it's, this is what Instagram used to be in 2012, mm -hmm. the undiscovered territory. So it, it's just such a fun way to grow a business. And like, you never know who's going to hear you, who's going to, uh, invite you on more shows and what's going to come out of these interviews. And the best thing, Jen, is like these interviews are search friendly. So somebody may hear this interview in like three years from now and may contact me, may contact, you know, you. Podcasts are just such a beautiful way and fun way to grow so a business. True. It's so true. They last forever. They don't get pushed down in a feed. They don't get pushed down in your, in your grid on Instagram. That's so, that's such a great... Um, conversation. Now you were saying that um, podcasts are what are now to what Instagram was in 2012, which means it's kind of like, if you're in, if this is time to be an early adopter, which means you have to take action before you're ready. Yes, absolutely. And before that website is done, before you have um, all ducks in a row, like time is right now because i it's going to be harder and harder. More people are going to be discovering um, being a guest on podcasts and how well it's working. And it's going to be more and more saturated. And I predict you guys are gonna start charging. I already saw some charges there when um, you know when my when I work with my clients. And it's going to be more normal to be charged for interviews. So for now, 
a lot of interviews are free and wow what a fantastic way to to i mean it's it's a great way to take advantage i mean the, to get free leads nowadays highly recommend it <laughs> okay so let's talk about the hows of getting on a podcast because I love doing interviews. Like I could literally, my favorite thing to do is interviewing other women or being interviewed. Talking with people gives me energy, but in my, in my visibility plan, it's always the thing I feel like I don't have the bandwidth for reaching out to podcasts, pitching myself. How, how do you help people create the bandwidth so that this doesn't feel like a, a, a whole other thing that they have to deal with? Yeah, so you are the queen of systems. You teach <laughs> how to create your system. So I recommend to create a system for this as well. Okay. And I definitely recommend to pitch instead of waiting for invites. Because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people who are just starting out, they're, they're surprised that they are not getting invited. But I know that podcast hosts are so busy and they get so many pitches already that they can just pick the guests from the pitches. Mm -hmm. So to wait for getting invited is not really a strategy that can really contribute to business growth. Because in order for this to, to work really well, like I recommend to book yourself on 10, 20, 30 podcasts as a guest, not like one or two, because okay. then you have more chances to... Um, to connect yes, um, yes. with more people and like and more audiences. So the first thing I would do, I would start with a strong pitch, and I would start with a pitch that is other centered. Mm -hmm. I would pitch with an open heart. So how can I help the host? How can I contribute to the show? How can I promote? Mm -hmm. um, and because we have to remember that hosts start their shows to grow their businesses so what if we don't make it about us even though we are the guests um, but about them what can we do to help their show grow and i'm getting such incredible responses from hosts because they tell me that nobody not many people pay attention to how they can help, help the, the show audience. how they can yes. help the host that strategy of being, I call it being you focused versus using the I narrative. And right. it is something that is not natural to people because they want to say, I'm an expert in this. I've been doing this. I can teach your audience about this. And it, I language falls on deaf ears. People are not that interested in us. They're interested in how we can help them or the result that we can get for them. And so I, I use this strategy all the time and I'm so glad to hear you repeating it. And we need to remember to not just use that strategy in our emails or our blog posts or our social media, but to use it in our pitches as well. Absolutely. And another thing that's really important is to pitch the right podcast. Okay. So you are a coach that helps attracting magnet and magnetize the right clients. And when I saw that in your, in your bio on LinkedIn, I'm like, this is so important because many people focus on these vanity metrics, more, more followers, yes. more, a bigger audience, but what type of audience? Mm -hmm. So what type of audience are you going to be talking to? Because right. um, if you fill up your, a business with people who don't care about your offers, you're just going to be growing in the wrong way. It's not going to be a sustainable business. So yes. um, creating a good pitch and then choosing the right podcast to be on yes. is very, very important. And then you need a, you need a system because I would recommend to batch it, to batch mm -hmm. the pitching. So, you know, but send 10, five, 10 um, tailored to each show pitches. I love this advice. Thank you so much. Now, when you are looking for a, the perfect podcast, are you searching certain keywords on like Spotify or iTunes, or are you actually listening to all of these podcasts? How do you kind of streamline that strategy? That is a great question. So I would not recommend keywords because if we use keywords, only the large podcasts will show up. And of course, I wish, every, I wish everyone to be on the biggest shows out there, right. but um, I recommend to pick a show that is 
that you know that your audience listens to mm -hmm. and then put it in iTunes and click on related. Oh, that is so simple. Yeah, so then you basically make your list with the shows that are related to the show that your audience listens to. Very smart. Right? Very smart, yeah. Just, just related instead of keywords. <laughs> and you could do LinkedIn as well. Just, sh just type in podcast host and then see who is your connection. Um, and, and do it this way because this way you're just more connected. So, so yeah. smart. Hey, mm -hmm. do you have any um, myths that you hear a lot from women, like beliefs that they have that are kind of like, no, 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 that's a big lie about this strategy. Any, anything that comes to mind? Strategy as far as being a guest on podcasts? Yes. Or visibility? Okay. No, podcasts. Do you, have any, do you have any myths about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so a lot of people think that they want to be on the biggest ones. They want to um, hit for the highest one, for, for, for the most, for the biggest ones, the most popular ones. Okay. And why, why do they think that it's possible to go from zero to Oprah? It is not. So what they spend time on is preparing themselves for these huge shows instead of building their podcast guest resume with the shows that are open to have them as guests because you never know what's going to come out of of an interview we that's have so no true. idea right you never know who's listening exactly that's such a great point thank you for sharing that that's a good one um do you have any other advice for people on the 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 importance of being visible and any other strategies that you like to tell your clients? So I would definitely recommend to start getting visible and start getting on podcasts, um, create your social media strategy as soon as possible because mm -hmm. with visibility comes confidence and with visibility comes charging more, being this authority in your field. like. I get, very often I get, um, I hear people say, oh, Anna, this means a lot coming from you. And you know, at first when I heard it, I'm like, it's kind of intimidating, but because I am all over, like I do LinkedIn videos every day, I am on podcasts, I teach, I share knowledge. Um, then it just, I, and, and of course, I share a lot of value and, and with, with this abundance yes. mindset. So then I appear and I am this authority in, in, in my field as far as branding and building a business based on getting visible. Right. So you, you mentioned a social media strategy. So we don't just work in an isolation tank. We don't just do podcasts. We also have to fold in some other things. And at the very beginning of our conversation today, I think before we hit record, we started talking a little bit about, you know, okay, so podcasting and social media, and at the same time, how to not burn out. You don't have to be everywhere, right? Yeah, definitely. It's, um, it's important to create this sustainable strategy because if we like shoot for the stars right away and we can't maintain it, yes. I'm sure we all experience that. I have. I just give up overall. You just what? I just give up. Overall. Oh, give up. Yes, yes, yes. Right, right, right. You know, like daily videos on YouTube. Like it's not sustainable <laughs> right. unless you have a big team and mm -hmm. you have a system to back it up. But creating something that we can sustain that fits our lifestyle is very important. Instead of comparing ourselves to somebody who has a, a big team working on repurposing content for them. Like, yes you know, we are on chapter two and we are comparing ourselves to like chapter 20 of somebody else's book. It's, it's a different context. Yeah. I hear you, you talked earlier about like going from zero to Oprah. I think that's a great line. Um, and a lot of people are like, well, if I can't be on Amy Porterfield's podcast or Marie Forleo's podcast, then like why bother? But every, you know, there's a lot of people who have an audience. Like I don't even listen to those podcasts anymore. I listen to smaller podcasts done by people like that I've known or connected with. Um, and, it, and it's the same thing. If you think about Amy Porterfield or Marie Forleo as two examples I can think of off the top of my head, they have enormous teams behind them. So yes, 
she records something and then it's repurposed and chopped up because she has an entire team behind them. Most of the people I'm working with are one woman shows. And so they don't even have the bandwidth. So I love that we are talking about making this sustainable, you know, bite-sized batching it, creating a system. These are all things we really need people to remember because you can be visible and you don't need to be an Amy Porterfield or a Marie Forleo to have successful business. Yes, absolutely. There are so many ways to, to, to run a business successfully. And we just have to find that sauce that works for us. That's right. There's, I always tell my clients, there's no one size fits all. There's no one. Yes, exactly. So what is one last thing you'd like to share with us? Like something that you think most women don't know when it comes to like either branding or visibility. I know these are your areas of success or your areas of, of expertise, What's something you think that like we just really could benefit from knowing? Yeah, so I really recommend to just shift our mindset and trust the process and trust the fact that clarity will come with exposure. Mm-hmm. So if you are stopping yourself from getting visible because you don't have your story straight, you don't have the hooks, the story hooks, Um, put yourself out there and start talking and refining your message because this is the answers will not come when we're just sitting on our own in front of our laptops closed in a room that's not when the answers come the answers come when we start talking to our audience and we should do it when we are not ready like right now i love it thank you for sharing your expertise your strategy, and also your insight and, ex- and your experience. Thank you so much. Um, how can people connect with you, Anna? I've been, to your, I've been to your business Facebook page and I can personally speak to how much value you provide there every, every day, a video and very searchable, really wonderful. So how can people connect with you so that they can benefit from all of your knowledge? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually have a free pitch download on my website on annasabino.com because this is what I see that it stops people like that pitch. So I am sharing the exact email copy I've been sending to podcast hosts that has secured me over 70 interviews right now. And so you could just grab it and copy paste, tweak it a bit and start booking your interviews. It's on annasabino.com. Okay. And that's S-A-B-I-N-O.com, right? A-N-N-A, Sabino. Yes. Um, So I'm going to have the link in the comments if this is on video and in the description for the podcast. So I will let everybody know. And it's very, that's a, that's a really generous offer. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, So you're on Facebook. Where else can people find you? I am on Instagram at lucidanna. Okay. YouTube, Anna Sabina. Okay, great. (laughs) My dog has been going crazy this entire interview. So thank you for putting up with him, but he's like just bonkers. So uh, we're, let's wrap this video up. I hope that you have enjoyed, not only enjoyed listening to Anna, but learned from her and understood that like, there's not just one way. Visibility is a non-negotiable and you can make it work for you. It doesn't have to be like you're shooting for, you know, getting on the, 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 the set, um, I forget the, what the name is, the Joe Rogan podcast, the number one podcast in America. Right. Like, you don't have to be that. You can just be on the next podcast that has space for you. And so wh- why not, why not just do it before you're ready? So just make the leap, right? Absolutely. So many opportunities out there. I can't wait to hear you guys on all these shows. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) Thank you, Anna. All right, everybody. Talk to you next week. Bye.